والثاني في الحديث الذي استحق الغرفات نسأل الله عز وجل أن نجعلنا وإياكم منهم قال وأفشى السلام والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول أفشوا السلام بينكم ألا أدلكم على شيء إذا فعلتموه تحاببتم أفشوا السلام بينكم والسلام اسم من أسماء الله يدل على الأمن والطمأنينة والمحبة وهو تحية أهل الجنة تحيتهم فيها سلام والله عز وجل يحيي عباده بالسلام فحينا ربنا بالسلام وهي تحية أهل الإسلام فإذا لقي المسلم أخاه سلم عليه وهذا من حقوق الإسلام إذا لقيته أن تسلم عليه وإذا مرض أن تعوده وإذا عطس فحمد الله أن تشمته تقول له يرحمك الله وإذا مات تمشي في جنازته وتنصح له وتقف معه في محنته أفشوا السلام أي ألقوا السلام وإلقاء السلام سنة ورد السلام واجب والقليل يسلم على الكثير والراكب يسلم على الماشي فإذا سلمت على قوم فرد أحدهم فقد أتى بالواجب فلا يلزم أن يردوا جميعا لكن يجب أن يردوا عليه وقول السلام عليكم فيه عشر حسنات فإذا زاد ورحمة الله عشر أخرى وإذا زاد وبركاته فيها عشر أخرى ثلاثين حسنة في قولك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وإذا رأيت الكافر الغير المسلم فلك أن تبدأه بالتحية لكن السلام هو شعار وتحية أهل الإيمان وأهل الإسلام لأنه اسم من أسماء الله تعالى فإفشاء السلام سنة هجرها المسلمون للأسف إما لأنه لا يريد أن يظهر نفسه خصوصا في بلاد غير المسلمين بعضهم لا يريد أن يظهر بأنه مسلم وهذا خطر شديد عليه يخشى عليه النفاق والعياذ بالله أو أنه جاء يجهل هذا الأمر ويزهد في هذا الأجر فلا بد أن يكون بين المسلمين قواسم مشتركة ولا بد أن يكون بينهم تعاون على البر والتقوى ولا بد أن يكون بينهم محبة ولا بد أن يحيي بعضهم بعضا في الأعياد وفي الجمع وفي المناسبات لتبقى رابطة الأخوة الإيمانية قائمة بينهم فلا خلاء يومئذ بعضهم لبعض عدو إلا المتقين ثم الثالث الذي استحق الغرفات ألان الكلام وأفشى السلام وأطعم الطعام أطعم الطعام قد أثنى الله عز وجل على المؤمنين الأولين قالوا يطعمون الطعام على حبه مسكينا ويتيما واسيرا انما نطعمكم لوجه الله فاطعام الطعام لا بد ان يكون لوجه الله ولا بد ان يكون المطعم محبا لهذا الاطعام يعني يطعم وهو عن حب وليس عن كراهيه وخجل واستحياء واكراه لا يطعم هذا الطعام لمصلحه لا يطعم هذا الطعام ليكون رشوه لا يطعم هذا الطعام لقضاء حاجة وإنما يطعم هذا الطعام لله وابتغاء وجه الله 
وهذا من أفضل أعمال البر ما كان أحد يدخل بيت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إلا يخرج طاعما وإطعام الطعام من أفضل أعمال البر وأسباب دخول الجنة والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي ليستعين التقي بطعامك على طاعة الله أما الفاسق والفاجر والمنافق فإنك تعرفه ليستعين به على معصية الله فكأنك تقويه على معصية الله إذا أطعمته لا تصاحب إلا مؤمنا ولا يأكل طعامك إلا تقي ونحن الآن نستقبل رمضان بعد شهر أو أقل من شهر وهو شهر الإطعام وشهر الصدقات وشهر البذل وشهر تفطير الصائمين ففي إطعام الطعام في رمضان وتفطير الصائمين ثواب وأجر عظيم ثم الرابع قال وأدام الصيام والمقصود به صيام النافلة وليس صيام الفريضة ولا شك ولا ريب أن الصيام من أفضل أعمال البر وفي الحديث من صام يوما في سبيل الله أي ابتغاء وجه الله بعد الله بينه وبين النار كما بين السماء والأرض أو بعد الله بينه وبين النار سبعين خريفة والصوم جنة أي بقاية وكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم الاثنين والخميس وقال ترفع فيهما الأعمال وأحب أن يرفع عملي وأنا صائم وكان يصوم الثلاث أيام البيض من كل شهر عربي 13 و 14 و 15 وقال تعدل صيام الشهر لأن الحسنة بعشر أمثالها وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول من صام رمضان ثم أتبعه ستة من شوال كان كمن صام الدهر لأن رمضان ثلاثين يوم بعشرة ثلاثمائة يوم وست أيام بعشرة ستين فهذا تمام السنة وكان يصوم يوم عرفة ويأمر بصيامه ويقول يكفر ذنوب سنتين الماضية واللاحق وكان يصوم يوم عاشوراء وأمر وندب أمته لصيام التاسع وقال لئن بقيت إلى قابل لأصومن التاسع وأخبر أنه يكفر ذنوب سنة وهكذا كان صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم يصوم المحرم من المحرم ويصوم أكثر شعبان وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يصوم التسع من ذي الحجة في العشر الأول من ذي الحجة وقال ما من أيام فيها العمل الصالح أحب إلى الله تعالى من هذه العشر قالوا ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله قال ولا الجهاد في سبيل الله إلا رجل خرج بنفسه وماله ثم لم يرجع من ذلك بشيء فهذا هو صيام النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم وكان يقول أحب الصيام إلى الله صيام داود كان يصوم يوما ويفطر يوما وكان لا يفر إذا لقي العدو يعني لم يكن هذا الصيام يمنعه عن جهاد أعدائه ولم يكن يمنعه عن الأمور المهمة فإدامة الصيام والدوام على الصيام من أسباب دخول الجنة ودخول الغرفات ثم أخيرا قال وصلى بالليل والناس ليا وهذا سر بين العبد وربه هذا هو ذهب الصالحين قيام الليل هذا الذي قال فيه الصالحون لو يعلم الملوك ما نحن فيه لجالدون عليه بالسيوف هذا الذي يقول ابن تيمية إن في الدنيا جنة من لم يدخلها لم يدخل جنة الآخرة أن تقوم في جوف الليل تناجي ربك تبكي بين يدي ربك تخشع تدعو الله لا يطلع عليك أحد إلا الله 
تدعو ربك في سجودك تتلو كتاب ربك تتجافى جنوبهم عن المضاجع يدعون ربهم خوفا وطمعا ومما رزقناهم ينفقون كانوا قليلا من الليل ما يهجعون اي ينامون وبالاسحار هم يستغفرون هذا هو وصف عباد الله وصف عباد الله الصالحين ولهذا تتحقق ولايه الله بقيام الليل والانسان الذي يوفق لقيام الليل يتنور قلبه يصبح قلبه منور وتظهر النضر على وجهه والنور والإشراقة يعني طاعته لله وقيامه بالليل يظهر على وجهه وفي قلبه وفي بصيرته ويلقي الله عز وجل عليه مهابة ومحبة الخلق وكان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم يسمع له بالليل أزيز بصدره كأزيز المرجل من البكاء من خشية الله وكان صلى الله عليه وسلم يقوم حتى تتفطر قدماه يعني تتورم فتقول له من المؤمنين يا رسول الله قد غفر الله لك ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر فلماذا كل هذا الصلاة وهذا القيام فيقول أفلا أكون عبدا شكورا صلى يوما صلى الله عليه وسلم وصلى معه ابن عبد المسعود فافتتح البقرة فقال ابن مسعود قلت اركع عند المئة فختم سورة البقرة فقلت اركع عند نهاية سورة البقرة فمضى فافتتح النساء وانتهى من النساء ورجع إلى آل عمران وختم آل عمران ثلاث سور طوال في ركعة واحدة قال ابن مسعود حتى هممت بسوء قال ماذا هممت؟ قال هممت أن أجلس وأدع النبي قال هذه صلاة رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم في الليل وكان في وصف الصحابة كانوا فرسان بالنهار رهبان بالليل وكان يسمع في بيوتهم بالقرآن دوي كدوي النحل اجعل لك ولو ركعتين من الليل تناجي فيها ربك وتكون سر بينك وبين ربك وتدعو ربك وتشكو همك وتسأل ربك قضاء حاجتك إذا ما أحسنت صلتك بربك في الليل لا تحسن صلتك بالخلق في النهار خصوصا طلاب العلم والدعاة إذا ما كان لهم صلة بالله في الليل لن يفلحوا في دعوة الناس في النهار لأنه بمقدار علاقتهم بربهم في الليل بمقدار نجاحهم في دعوتهم في النهار وبمقدار قبول الناس لدعوتهم ولكلامهم ولنا في رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وأصحابه أسوة حسنة الرسول عليه الصلاة والسلام يأتي عليه وفاطمة فيقرأ عليهما في الليل فيقول ألا تصليان كيف تسوى نايمين لماذا تنامون عن الصلاة وذكر عند النبي عليه الصلاة والسلام رجل يعني نام حتى أصبح يعني طلع عليه الصباح فقال عليه الصلاة والسلام ذاك رجل بال الشيطان في أذنه أو أذنيه وفي أحد الصالحين تحقق هذا في حياته نام هكذا وفعلا فاتته فاته قيام الليل فايقظ فاستيقظ ووجد بللا في اذنه فاخذ هكذا وشمه فوجد فوجده بول قال والله ان بوله لثقيل بول الشيطان بان حقيقه هذا من تلاعب الشيطان به وقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم لعبد الله يا عبد الله لا تكن مثل فلان كان يقوم الليل فترك قيام الليل قيام الليل دأب الصالحين صلى الله عز وجل أن يوفقني وإياكم لهذه الخصال الموجبة للجنة والموجبة لأعلى درج الجنة والموجبة للغرفات صلى الله أن يغفر ذنوبنا وأن يستر عيوبنا وأن يختم بالصالحات أعمالنا وأن يفقهنا في الدين وأن يعلمنا التأويل وأن يجعلنا 
من المسارعين في الخيرات المجتنبين للمعاصي والمنكرات إن ولي ذلك القادر عليه وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وآله وسلم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارك الله فيكم وفي صرائكم وجزاكم الله خيرا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Shaykh, Jazal Allah Khairan, continue with explaining the qualities of the people that deserve these uh, uh, palaces in paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared. He said that the second one deserving of uh, these uh, chambers or these palaces is one that greets other with the greeting of Islam, the greeting of peace. And he said uh, that uh, uh, Salam is one of the names of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, he said that the people of paradise when they go to paradise they will have uh, peace and security and they will have tranquility and he said that uh, uh, Salam is the greeting of the people of paradise and it is the greeting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala greets the believers with and it is also the greeting of the people of uh, Islam. It is also one of the rights of a Muslim over another. As Rasulullah said in a hadith that the right of a Muslim over another is that, that if he greets you with the greeting of Islam, you should return his greeting and if he uh, is sick, you should uh, visit him and if he sneezes, you should say uh, Allah to him and if he dies, then you should go on his uh, funeral. And if he seeks advice from you, then you should advise him and you should help uh, a Muslim uh, when they are in times of uh, hardship. And Ashu Salam here means uh, greeting, greet with the greeting of Islam. And the Shaykh mentioned that greeting a person with the greeting of Islam is a sunnah. And returning the greeting is wajib, it is obligatory. And he mentioned that a small number of people should greet a large number of people. If a person is riding, then he should uh, uh, greet the uh, pedestrian first. And uh, uh, he also mentioned that if a person says or greets a group of people, then at least one of them should uh, return the greeting. He also said if one says assalamu alaikum, then they get 10 rewards. And if somebody uh, uh, greets by saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, then they get 10 more rewards, and that make it, makes it 20. And if somebody says assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, then they get 30 rewards. And he also said that it is allowed to uh, greet a non-Muslim first, uh, with any greeting, however, we should not greet them with the greeting of Islam because that is specific to the Muslims and it is the banner of the Muslims. Uh, the Shaykh concluded by saying that uh, there are today, unfortunately, some Muslims, especially those who live in non-Muslim countries, who do not greet one another because they, hide, they want to hide their deen. They don't want to make their Islam manifest. And this is this is the Shaykh mentioned that it could lead to hypocrisy. He explained that when the Muslims greet one another, this creates a love between them and creates uh, cooperation uh, between them, especially when they greet each other uh, during uh, um, uh, different occasions such as uh, the days of Eid. So we should greet one another so that this brotherhood, that's, uh, this brotherhood uh, can stay between the uh, Muslims. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that those who used to befriend one another in this life will be enemies of one another on the, in the hereafter, except for the pious, except for those who befriended one another uh, in piety of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, the Shaykh continued by mentioning that the third qualities of the people who will have these palaces in paradise are those who feed other people, who give food
to other people. And they don't they defeat other people for no reason but to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They do it out of love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to please to please him and they don't do it while they are detesting it. Meaning that when you give this food you have to do it willingly and you have to do it with a good intention and your intention should be to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not that because you want the person that you are fee feeling to uh, return a favor to you or because you're using it as a bribe to that person uh, he also said that when someone entered the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then uh, whoever entered the house of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then they would leave full, well fed. And feeding others is one of the uh, one of the signs of piety and goodness. As Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in a hadith, do not befriend except a believer and do not let anyone eat your food but a pious person. Because when you feed a pious person, you help this person to be more pious. However, when you feed a disobedient person or a wicked person, you are feeding them to be more uh, wicked and more uh, disobedient. And the Shaykh mentioned that, in, inshallah, in a month or so, we will be uh, receiving the month of Ramadan, the month of fasting, the month of goodness, and the month of uh, feeding others, as Rasulullah said that one of the uh, good things that one can do in Ramadan is to feed a, um, a fasting person. The fourth quality, the fourth quality uh, of the, the people that deserve the castles, these castles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the believers is someone who uh, fasts continuously. And the fast here does not mean the fast of Ramadan, which is or any obligatory fasting, but uh, voluntary fasting. What is meant here is the voluntary fasting. And fasting is one of the uh, greatest acts of piety and goodness. Rasulullah says that whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah, then uh, 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 their reward is it's, it's, their reward is better than what is between the heavens and the earth. And uh, also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa says that whoever fasts one day for the sake of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keeps him away from hellfire, uh, the distance that would take 70 years to uh, cover. Also Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that fasting is of protection. Fasting is Jannah, which means it is a protection from hellfire. Rasulullah used to fast the days of Monday and Thursday. And he used to say that these two days are the days when the deeds of people uh, are raised to Allah. And he mentioned that he loved that his deeds would, uh, are raised to Allah while he is fasting. He also uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to fast three days of each uh, month. Uh, the, and uh, here what is meant by the month is the lunar months, the Hijri months. He used to fast the 13th, 14th, and the 15th. And he said, uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that fasting these three days equals the fasting of a whole month. Because one hasana, for one hasana, or for one good deed in Islam, you get 10 good deeds. For each day fasted of these three days, uh, you get ten rewards. Also, Rasulullah said that whoever fasts during the month of Ramadan and followed that up with fa uh, by fasting six days of Shawwal, then it is as if one fasted all his life or all uh, her life. Because if you uh, add it up, uh, three uh, 30 days of Ramadan multiplied by 10 is 300 days plus 6 months from, uh, plus 6 days multiplied by 10 that's 60 days so 360 days that is the whole year if someone does it every year that's uh, as if one has fasted every day also 
the uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam guided us to fast the day of Arafah. And he said that fasting the day of Arafah uh, uh, wipes out the sins uh, of two years. Uh, also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam uh, instructed us to fast the day of Ashura and also fast with it the ninth day. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam fasted on the day of Ashura said that if I lived until uh, if I live until next year, then I will fast uh, the ninth day. And he said that fasting the day of Ashura uh, wipes out the sins uh, of a whole year. Uh, also, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fasted in Muharram, and he also fasted most of Sha'ban, most of the month of Sha'ban. Uh, and he guided us to fast on the night of the Hijjah. And uh, he said about the first 10 days of the Hijjah, the month of the Hijjah, that there are no deeds that are better than uh, these deeds. There are, there are no deeds that are done during the whole year that are better than uh, these, uh, these days, the, days of, the first days of uh, the Hijjah. And Rasulullah said that the most beloved fasting is the fasting of Dawood who used to fast every other day. He would fast one day and not fast another and a day, and so on and so forth. And that did not stop him from uh, fighting as well. So this fast did not stop him from fighting if he had to fight, and did not uh, stop him from doing his uh, daily duties. So uh, fasting is one of the most uh, or one of the greatest things that one can do to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <clears throat> the fifth quality of the people that deserve the uh, palaces that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prepared for the believers in paradise is that they pray at night while others are uh, sleeping, meaning they offer voluntary prayers. And the Shaykh explained that these prayers are a secret between a servant of Allah and their Lord. The pious people uh, wake up at night and, and, uh, and that's, that is why the pious people say that we live in a happiness. We live in a happiness that if the kings of this life, if the kings know about it, then they would beat us. They would punish us with swords over it. They used to find their happiness. The pious people used to find their happiness in praying at night. Uh, as Ibn Taymiyyah said that there is a, uh, in this life there is a paradise. There is a paradise. And he meant uh, prayers at night. Meaning that one should wake up at night and uh, recite the Quran and uh, make supplications and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from his boundaries and ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness and uh, mercy. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes the people that wake up at night and pray regularly, that they used to sleep only a little at night. They sleep only a little and during uh, the ashar, during the sahar, meaning during uh, the pre-dawn period, which is around the third uh, part of the night, then they would seek the repentance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They slept only a little and during the pre-dawn periods of the day, they seek the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Shaykh also explained that if one prays during the night, you'll find that their faces are shining during the day. They are praying in the darkness of the night and yet their faces will be shining during the day. Rasulullah when he woke up at night and prayed, you would hear uh, the, 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 the voice and the sound that uh, the people heard was like the boiling of, of, uh, of water, of a, a pot, uh, because of, of crying to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa uh, used to pray at night until his feet would get sore. And when Aisha radiallahu anha told him once, you are doing all of this, you are praying at night, 
and, uh, and, and your feet are sore, and, uh, and you are the one whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgave his previous and his future sins. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam answered by saying, shouldn't I be a thankful servant of Allah? Once he was praying, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and Ibn Mas'ud was praying beside him. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam started by reciting Surah Al-Baqarah. And Ibn Mas'ud thought that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stop at one hand and ayah 100. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam continued. And then Mas'ud thought that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stop at the end of Surah Al-Baqarah. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went on to read Surah Al-Nisa and finished all of it. And every time Ibn Mas'ud thought that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would stop. Then Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went back to Surah Al-Imran until he finished all of it. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed three long surahs in one rak'ah until uh, uh, Ibn Mas'ud said that I, I thought of doing something bad. And when he was asked what was that thing, he said, I thought of sitting down and letting Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam uh, uh, standing in prayer. So th this was the, 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 the situation. This was the case of the, the state of the Sahaba Ridwan alayhi. They used to be nights at night. And they used, uh, they used to be nights during the day. They, and they used to be uh, uh, fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at night. And when they prayed, they, their voice, their voices, the voices that were coming from their houses was like the buzzing of the bees. So the Shaykh is advancing that one should get up at night and pray at least two rak'ahs to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and supplicate Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask for his forgiveness and his mercy. Because if one does not have that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that relation at night then one cannot have a good relationship with people during the day. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam once told Ali and Fatima, shouldn't you pray at night? Shouldn't you pray at night? And uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he was told about a man who did not wake up, who slept until the morning, when he was told about that man, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that shaitan urinated in the ear of that man and the shaykh said that this actually happened there was a man who missed the night prayers and in the morning he found his ear wet and when he touched his ear he when he smelled well, he touched his ear and he smelled he smelled his fingers he could smell urine so this could actually uh, happen and Rasulullah said to Abdullah he said oh Abdullah don't be like so and so, who used to pray at night and then he stopped. And the Shaykh, Jazakallah khairan, ended his talk by making a dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And some of the things that he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to guide us to have these qualities. And, so, and he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us the knowledge and the understanding of the religion. And also he asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us from the, uh, from the good things that he has and lead us to avoid uh, all kinds of sins and uh, disobedience. I mean,